How do hackers bypass two-factor authentication? How can you bypass two-factor authentication? Well, as a red teamer, penetration tester, ethical hacker, or what have you, sometimes you don't even necessarily bypass two-factor authentication, but you work within the constraints and restrictions that it presents to you as a hacker. In this video, I'm gonna show you one way that we might be able to do that. Obviously, this video is for education's sake, it's for learning, it's for awareness, it's just for information, and hopefully we have a little bit of fun with it. But, hey, say hello to Lewis Miller. This is our target, this is our victim, he is the individual, this is just a sock puppet account that I've created, again, just for learning here, just for that sandbox sake. We're gonna go ahead and distill, or gloss over, or water down some of the things that we might end up doing here, but Lewis Miller is our individual target. Now I'm gonna be hopping in and out, in between, back and forth, the victim perspective and the attack perspective because we only have one screen here on YouTube but I'll try to add a little video overlay to show you where we are in the perspective here. So say Lewis Miller was doing his thing, hey he was taking a look at his email, there's nothing in there at the moment but he is a Google Gmail user and our attacker has maybe done some profiling, they've done some research, they've done their homework and they've figured out hey what is Lewis's email address, they figured out his profile picture because that's obviously online on the internet and the hacker knows that he has a Google account. Now the hacker, threat actor, adversary, wants to social engineer Lewis. He wants to fool him, he wants to deceive him, he wants to trick him into accidentally giving his password and then everything that they might need for the two-factor authentication access. So what that hacker might do is honestly just try to recreate the regular login page for Google for, hey, entering the email address lewislmiller76 at gmail.com and trying to make it look like everything that they would experience as they were naturally logging in. Say they enter their password, yada, 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 and then once they click on that button to log in, it then prompts them for the two-factor authentication code potentially sent to their phone, SMS, and that way they are able to retrieve that info just as well. That's sort of like a watering hole attack. Let me show you how we might set that up. Because what's to stop me from just sort of right-clicking on this page, checking the inspect option, and then grabbing just the bare-bones, basic, stupid and dumb HTML and all of the hypertext markup language this whole page is made up of? We could right-click and edit as HTML to get all of this data as something that we could just sort of copy and paste. And then if I move into a text editor and then just paste and slap all this in here, and now they could scroll through this, look for any of the indicators of Hi Lewis, and then see, oh, what what changes might we make to change this to John or Alice or Joe or anything and then replace the profile picture images. We know that's probably going to be in like a GIF image or a JPEG file or probably going to be hosted by Google's user content. They can make that change super duper easily. And of course manipulating, hey, what email is displayed here? Now once the hacker has customized the HTML to be tailored and targeted towards the victim, they still aren't done because right now it's just a flat HTML. HTML page. They probably want to add some other code at the very, very end or hidden and tucked away some way, somehow, so that they can actually collect the credentials that are typed in to the form. I'll do this with just some super simple, super dumb, easy JavaScript again, client-side codes that we end up taking, ooh, the input that they fill in for their password, let's post it to the web server so that we can keep track of that data. Now, once those HTML files have been crafted, manipulated, modified to look like the victim, all the hacker wants to do is serve those publicly on the open internet. They want a web server, they want something that they can still sort of catch and collect all the information that goes through that. So I'm doing this in a super simple, crude, easy, rudimentary way, just a stupid dumb Python little server here done with Flask to create routes for the login page for the two-factor authentication page and do this thing. Now I'll show you this because if we were to go ahead and run this nice and easy, I am just going to be listening on localhost, hey local port, local port 5000, whatever. If you wanted to, of course you could buy a domain to make this super duper realistic. You could spin it out on the open internet with like, I don't know, ngrok, make a scheme for HTTP that matches this or obviously have a self-signed certificate. Try to look as realistic as possible, but for demonstration's sake, look, we're doing it super easy. Next, the hacker wants to create a phishing email. They want to create some bait. They want to make a lure, something that will hook the user into thinking, oh no, there is a problem with my Google account and I need to check in and confirm my information, review access, and all those security things with a little bit of urgency so they're willing to do it right then and there because the hacker needs to be waiting and awaiting to get their password, send off a genuine in real two-factor authentication code and then retrieve it so that they can log in rather than them. 
So again, hey, just for the sake of demonstrations, we're going to keep this super duper easy. I'm going to go ahead and send an email with anonymous email. Hey, if you wanted to subscribe, do whatever you could change. Oh, uh, Google security team, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you could change the email that it came from. Going to two, of course. We do want to send this to our victim, lewislmiller76 at gmail.com. And then we want to craft the phishing email. Obviously, if this were real, they would do it with a little bit more professionalism. They'd make it super duper believable. They'd make the images, they'd make it look like a genuine real email from Google. But ultimately, we're going to keep it kind of simple and easy. Let me go ahead and create a link. Let's say, please click here to confirm your account. And I will add a link to go to localhost on port 5000, where I'm serving that bait, that lure, that hook. And now we could go ahead and send the email. For demonstration's sake, I'll go ahead and put these side by side. Uh, and of course, hey, once I hit that send email button, we should see that fire off and land in Lewis's inbox. There it is. Cool. Perfect. Now Lewis has this security alert. Hey, we noticed some suspicious activity on your Google account, please click here to confirm your account information. So let's go ahead and click on that link as the poor, innocent, silly, naive user that we are, and let's go ahead and enter our password. Remember, I am real Lewis right now. I am genuinely actually the victim. And let's say I type in my password, blah, blah, blah. I don't use a password manager because I'm stupid and don't do those security things. Now, bear in mind, the actual hacker here wants to be sitting and waiting and just ready to catch once this user actually clicks on that lore and starts to type in the password, they want to be able to try to genuinely and legitimately log in as Lewis, as the victim, so that a real two-factor authentication code gets sent to their device. Let's do this side by side so you can see both the victim and the attacker at the same time. Say on the right hand side is the victim, poor Lewis, just typed in his password. On the left hand side is the attacker waiting and ready to catch the password as they click the next button. I'll fire it off here and there it is. We can see we have exfiltrated and stolen Lewis's real password, and now he's going to be waiting for a real, genuine two-factor authentication code sent to his cell phone. I've got that ready right here, and let's go be the poor victim Lewis. But wait, before we go any further for our social engineering and all the pen-testy hacker stuff that we're up to, I do want to give a little bit of love to today's sponsor, PlexTrack, because hey, you might just be doing some of this awesome stuff in your latest pen test, and you want to make it super duper easy to write the report. Take it away, PlexTrack. When you're performing a penetration test, you're in the zone. You're hacking away and you're having fun, gathering findings, beating up vulnerabilities and earning domain admin. But you might be dreading the work that comes after. You have to write a report. But writing a pen test report doesn't have to be dull and boring and long and tedious. In fact, it can be a breeze. You don't even have to worry about your report because PlexTrack can handle it for you. If you aren't familiar, PlexTrack is the premier cybersecurity reporting and collaboration platform that makes penetration testers, red teamers, and cybersecurity teams more efficient, effective, and proactive. PlexTrack removes the pain of reporting and lets you collaborate between both red and blue teams for effective purple teaming and faster remediation. The PlexTrack platform lets you easily aggregate findings, pull in reusable content from write-up databases and content libraries, and track and measure engagement progress in real time. Import assets from CSV files or Nmap or Nessus and so many others of your favorite tools. With over 25 integrations, you can streamline your reporting and collaboration process right into your existing workflow. You can do even faster testing with PlexTrax runbooks and show the impact to managers and leadership with PlexTrax analytics and visualizations. Within minutes, you can have your pen test report done and dusted, all with your team's logo and details, and then sent off to the client. Spend more time hacking and less time reporting. Learn how you can boost your team's efficiency by 30% and cut reporting time by up to 65% with PlexTrax. Seriously, check out PlexTrack. I have great colleagues and peers that use PlexTrack every day for reporting. Get started with my link below in the video description and let you and your team get back to hacking. Huge thanks to PlexTrack for sponsoring this video.
Back in action here, say that our hacker had successfully stolen, exfiltrated, and gotten the password for the victim, the target Lewis here. Now, in a separate window, a separate session, something that is not logged into a Google account, just a guest here, let's say that they were going to try and log in in real time, literally trying to log in to Lewis's account, hit next to log in, enter the password that they have now discovered, and then send a real and genuine two-factor authentication to Lewis's phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next here and we'll see genuinely real Google has sent a number to my phone and I have Lewis's phone right here for me and he's just gotten that text message. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click into this. I see that the Google code is 855001. And now let's go back to the victim perspective here. Say I'm Lewis and I enter in the code 855001. And over on the left hand side, the attacker is ready and waiting to retrieve this because once they hit next, they're gonna be redirected back to the original login prompt. Nothing's gonna happen for Lewis, but the attacker has now received that two-factor authentication code and they can successfully log in in their login. Let me go ahead and finish this. And now Lewis has been successfully logged in for this threat actor. Take a look, we are in fact Lewis. We can go manage our Google accounts. And with that, we have an account takeover. We can do whatever we want now. We can, hey, go take a look at their contacts. We can go see what they're up to on YouTube. We can go into their Google Drive file. We can go into their Gmail. We can honestly, I don't know, take out all of their personal private data, locations that they've been to, things that they've been up to. We can honestly just do a quick Google takeout, dig into their personal information, their birthday, what cards, what things they might've saved, other passwords or addresses hooked up to their profile, anything. It is a full account takeover, compromise of their identity with their Google Google account connected to so much. And listen, hey, this is all just for education's sake. This is all just for the demo, just for the showmanship, just for fun. Obviously, yeah, there could be some hiccups here. Google has a much more secure, like, hey, press the button on your phone with the Google connection or whatever. It's not always going to be SMS-based text messages for two-factor authentication, but that does go to show just how maybe, potentially, sometimes insecure two-factor authentication over SMS and text message really is. And at the end of the day, if you have an attacker, a hacker, threat actor, or adversary that's just kind of willing to sit by their dial here, waiting for the user to click on on their phishing link to actually submit their password, well, that they can then kind of streamlined in the same thread parallel to the user, send in that password, have a genuine two-factor code sent to them, and then retrieve that to really, really log in as them. When the victim is none the wiser, trapped in a loop trying to log in and they keep getting sent back. Anyway, I hope this was fun. I hope this was cool. I hope this was a little eye-opening to see, wow, that actually happening in real time and seeing what could be done for stealing and tracking down those two-factor authentication codes and how hackers might still be able to compromise your account even if you have two-factor authentication turned on. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.